Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So this past weekend we had the first round of the BRCA Front Wheel Drive National Championship uh, with a fantastic turnout, 66 entries, uh, and I thought it'd be a good time to take a bit of an overview of the control, motor and speed controller that we're using this season. Uh, they're made by Hobbywing, it's the Just Stock G3 and the G2.1 fixed timing motor. I'm going to split this video up into a few sections. I'm going to take a bit of an overview of the speed controller and the motor. I'm going to run the motor on the motor checker so you get an idea about what the specs are like and then give a bit of an overview of how to install it in this car, an X-Ray T4F21 and a couple of observations on the settings that we were using. We'll start off with a bit of an unboxing. So like most of the Hobbywing combos where you get a speed controller and a motor, they supply them in this nice black box. Uh, this one's got the stickers on it because it's uh, originally come via the UK distributor Schumacher Racing. And when you open up this box, you see inside that you've got the speed controller and the motor. So we'll start off with a look at the speed controller. Again, I'm going to take the shrink off of this now. So we've opened that up, as you can see, it comes in nice packaging, quite familiar to anyone that's had a hobby wing before. Um, pop the speed controller out here. As you can see, that comes pre-wired with 14 gauge wires. Uh, also has a fan attached to it, which is a 25 millimeter fan. And this is the very familiar hobby ring switch and of course the plug to go into your receiver. Um, first impressions are actually that it's uh, very nicely made. Uh, you get an aluminium top case here, which gives a, a, a nice look. Uh, also another nice feature on this actually, which isn't immediately obvious, is that Hobbywing have built in the capacitor bank. Um, so it's a lot easier to fit it into the car uh, without there being lots of extra wires and capacitors hanging around, although the switch is still separate. Uh, in terms of size, uh, it is uh, a little bit uh, larger than the old Joss stock. Uh, this is the G3 version. Uh, it's also quite a lot larger than the XR10 stock spec that I was using previously. Um, I believe it's a similar size to the, the pro level uh, XR10 speed controller uh, that some people might be using for modified racing. Also, you get, uh, as you expect, an instruction manual um, and uh, some hot ring stickers and a little bit of shrink and some tie wraps usual kind of thing that you would get. So what I'll do with this now is I'll just uh, pop it on a scale. I know that some people like to see the actual weight of these things. Hobby Wing do publish all of this on their website, but we'll do that now. And that is 76 grams, including the long wires. Okay, next up will be the motor. And again, it comes in a familiar Hobby Wing pack. And here's the motor. Uh, and it's also inside the packaging underneath the molded insert. You've got a manual and a couple of different sensor leads. You've got a short one uh, and a longer one. Uh, the motor itself is quite nice looking, good finish on it and um, sensor plug on the rear uh, with a with a sideward facing outlet, the three contacts that you'd expect on the top, a little bit of machining on the can. It has a lot less ventilation in it than a number of other motors um, and partly because of that it does weigh a little bit more than some of the other motors so it's maybe about 15 grams more than the Surpass motor I was using previously uh, when the rules allowed open 17 and a half turn motors. Uh, the other thing that I noticed about this motor is that it doesn't have as much uh, rotor strength as some other motors that have been used uh, more recently as competitive motors. Uh, so that probably does have a bit of an effect on the performance. I'll talk more about that later on. Uh, and we will just pop it onto the scale as well. And that motor weighs in at 177 grams. Now we've got the Just Stock motor connected up to the motor checker. So we'll just run a few basic tests, starting with the KV test. And we can see that that's leveling out at around about 2,460 kV. And with this current battery at 7.4 volts input, it's pulling two and a half amps 
and a total of just over 18,000 RPM. Next check I'm going to do is the motor timing check. And that one's giving us an average of 41 degrees uh, with two of the sensors at 40 degrees and the other at 43. In terms of installation and setup, there's no particular difficulties. In this car, I've chosen to put the speed controller behind the battery because it does help a little bit with the weight distribution from left to right. And that means you have slightly longer cables, um, but it's quite easy to, to, to lay out. Um, as with most racing speed controllers, uh, you will trim the cables to your own preferred length and just hold it in place with double sided tape. The initial calibration of the speed controller is the same as every other Hobbywing speed controller and it's done via the switch here. I'm not going to go through that again, but if you're interested, my previous video about the quick run speed controller does include more details on how to do initial calibration. Uh, also with the speed controller, you can do setup via the set button here as well. So there's uh, about 11 parameters that you can change. Um, again, it's a bit time consuming and if you are interested in doing that, Again, look at my uh, video on the quick run speed controller and I describe the process of doing setup via the set button. Um, but the way that I choose to set this one up and I think is a much more effective way of setting up the speed controller is to use Hobbywing's LCD program blocks, which is this one. Uh, one quick tip about using this kind of box, especially if you've had it for a little while, is to make sure that you've gone to the Hobbywing website and downloaded the most recent firmware, because if this fails to connect to the speed controller, it could just be that the firmware inside the program box is not up to date. So that's one thing to be sure of before you start programming this. Um, but I'm going to get this plugged into the speed controller and we'll go through the settings in a moment. Connecting the program box is quite straightforward. You just use the supplied cable to go between the program box and the program port, which is conveniently placed here on the top of the speed controller. Uh, make sure that the battery is plugged into the speed controller, the main battery, and then just turn on. Then press a button to connect the speed controller to the programmer. And this gives you a list of all the possible settings on the speed controller. So the first setting is the running mode. Uh, forward and brake is the default for racing. It also has options to include reverse or there's a, also a forward stroke reverse mode, which would be suitable for crawlers. Mode two is drag brake. Uh, by default, it's 10%. I normally go down to 0% on this. Um, but I mentioned before that the rotor on this motor is not particularly strong and funny enough this car will still roll downhill even with 10% drag brake so this amount of drag brake doesn't make very much difference with this particular motor uh, might make more difference with a motor with a more powerful rotor generally speaking for stock racing I'd be as close to zero as I can get away with uh, again the cutoff voltage is for the LiPo battery 3.2 volts per cell is absolutely fine it's a good default there is the option to go slightly higher if you want to play it safe um, but that's fine punch again is adjustable as with many hobbing speed controllers with a maximum of nine and a minimum of one uh, defaulting to seven is, is where i've left it for now uh, maximum brake is set to 100% um, again if you feel like there's too much braking you can reduce this but with this particular motor uh, the brakes are not particularly strong anyway again because of the fairly weak rotor uh, and the gear ratio we're running them at max reverse something that I always set to 100% on my hobbywing speed controllers even though I'm not actually using reverse on the track uh, initial brake set to drag brake, which I think is the most sensible setting. Neutral range set to 9%. Again, there's options to go for a slightly narrower neutral range, which you might use with a high quality radio and a slightly broader one. If your uh, radio is not one that uh, has su sufficient accuracy and, and the response is not very accurate when you're at low throttle. Thermal uh, on the speed controller to protect it from... Uh, blowing up basically. Um, I'm leaving this enabled. There is the option to disable it. Uh, the same with the motor as well. Um, not every motor will have a thermal sensor in it, but again, I've got the cutoff set to kick in if the motor does get too hot according to its internal sensor. Motor rotation is an interesting one. So this is the first uh, racing speed controller I've seen yet 
that actually allows you to select uh, either counterclockwise, which is the standard rotation for an electric motor in, a, in an RC racing car, or uh, clockwise rotation, uh, which as far as I'm aware is only used in some crawlers. So I'm not sure how you could actually use this in this particular speed controller, um, but the option is there if that's something that you want to do. Uh, the voltage is the output from the speed controller to the receiver. So you do have the option of running 7.4 volts if you are using servos that will support that higher voltage on the input. I'm not, I'm still using uh, six volt input servos. So I've left it at the six volt. This setting is a very interesting one on this speed controller, which is the RPM limit. And this is something that the BRCA have taken advantage of to control speeds in the class. They've selected a limit of 15,000 RPM. Uh, the ETS, which is a big series running in Europe, they actually run a limit of 17,500 RPM. And the aim of that is to try and get rid of some of the possible uh, differences between individual motors so that everyone is running at the same maximum speed. Uh, and again, the way to set this is just to scroll through the different settings with the plus and minus buttons, the minus clicks are back. And if you want to change it to another setting, and this is the same for all settings on this program box, you just press the OK button on the right. It says the data is saved and that change has actually been made. I'm just going to put it back to the correct uh, limit for the BRCA so I don't get into trouble. Uh, press that button again on the 15,000 RPM limit. And there's also an option to the restore all the defaults on the uh, speed controller as well, which I, I won't be using because I'm happy with those settings. Um, there is also a possibility, I'm not sure if it's uh, applicable to this speed controller, but to have different profiles anyway as well. So that's an overview of using the LCD program card to program the speed controller. I did mention as well that there's a really good feature built into this for scrutineering the RPM limit. Uh, and I'll show that to you quickly now. And that is when you have your transmitter switched on so that you're actually gonna be connected to the car when you power it up and you power the speed controller up. You'll just see there that the green light on the ESC flashes and flashing five times means that you have that 15,000 RPM limit on it. Uh, and that means that it's very easy for anyone, uh, uh, officials, to come along and check your car and scrutineer it. And in fact, that did happen to me when I was at the BRCA meeting over the weekend. In terms of how we've been setting up the motors for this meeting, um, first time for me using this motor ever at the start of the weekend. Um, and I did talk to a few other people as well about how they were setting them up. I've ended up having to go to a really, really um, low gear ratio uh, because it's a very large track that we were racing on over the weekend at Cotswold uh, in the west of England. And I ended up down at a gear ratio of 2.8 to 1. And I know that a few people were geared even higher than that. Um, I felt the 2.8 was, was on the limit. I didn't want to go any higher. It felt like the motor was, was getting quite hot towards the end of a run and maybe started to feel a bit soft. But uh, 2.8 to 1 is a really big gear ratio. Never run anything quite that big in the past. And um, fortunately, I did have the uh, super small spur gears and gigantic pinions required to do that. Uh, I think a few people got caught out. Uh, the other thing that I found quite interesting about this uh, motor setup was the lack of um, rotor strength. Um, first time I've ever put a car down on the track and uh, looked away for 30 seconds and then found that it's rolled down a hill while I haven't been looking at it, which was a bit of a surprise. So you had to place the car down at an angle to make sure that it didn't roll down any of the hills on the track. Um, when you're actually driving it though, the brakes to me feel fine. They are quite smooth and quite soft. And certainly compared to some of the older Hobbywing just stock speed controllers where I had some concerns about the braking feel, I've got no concerns about the braking feel on the just stock G3. Uh, and to be honest, no concerns whatsoever with either the motor or the speed controller. Both performed really reliably, uh, fit in the car really well, look good, great value, £90 for the whole combo. And I think really a positive thing forward for uh, spec racing uh, in the UK and looking forward to some more racing with these during the course of the season. As ever, if you've got any questions or comments about what I've talked about during the course of this video, please do leave them below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.